Pi. In this video, we will do a headless setup of the Raspberry Pi. That means that we will use the Raspberry Pi without a screen or without a keyboard or, or a mouse, but we will instead connect to it via the wired Ethernet cable. So that means that we don't need as much equipment. So that's uh, one advantage here. The video will cover how to install the Raspberry Pi OS and we will then use the EduRoam connection. So there's some special configuration there. The EduRoam is the Wi-Fi network that you usually find on universities around the world. And uh, this connection is used uh, for uh, getting internet access on the Pi. We are not able to access the Raspberry Pi over the EduRoam network. So that's why we also will use this wired uh, connection between our Raspberry Pi and the computer. So this uh, connection will be used for accessing it and uh, doing the configurations that we want. In the end, when the Raspberry Pi is configured properly, we will use the VNC viewer to access the desktop environment of the Raspberry Pi. This way, we can control the Raspberry Pi with the mouse and keyboard of our own computer. For this to work, we will need some equipment. And uh, as you see, we uh, have uh, some equipment uh, lying on the table here. We will of course need Raspberry Pi. And I have also one enclosure for it, but uh, that's not uh, strictly necessary. We also have uh, the SD card, and I'm using an adapter just to get uh, the size correct. This is a micro SD card that fits into the Raspberry Pi. And this is just to convert the size to the normal SD card size. And that's because my SD card reader is uh, only, yeah, only accepts this size. Next, you will need an Ethernet cable to connect uh, between the Raspberry Pi and your computer. Also make sure that your computer has one Ethernet port. If not, you can uh, get an adapter for this. Lastly, we will need this uh, uh, cable to power the Raspberry Pi. Since I'm using Raspberry Pi 3B, I'm using the micro USB. But if you're using Raspberry Pi 4, you will need the USB-C type. We will also be using some software in this project. To use SSH, we don't have to install anything because it's already available in the Windows command prompt. We will be using Notepad++ for creating the configuration file for the EduRoam. And we will also use Raspberry Pi Imager to actually flash the SD card so we get the right operating system on the Raspberry Pi. We will of course also cover a normal network configuration for your wireless uh, network at home. Okay, so the first step is to install Notepad++. Search for Notepad++ on Google and select the newest version. Scroll down to the installer link and download the file. Open the executable, follow the setup instructions. Now we can copy in the configuration text. Just copy from the description of this video. The first thing we need to uh, change is the username. Just uh, select the username you use to log in normally and enter your password. You can also check that your country is set correctly. And now we need to change our line endings. So go to EOL conversion and use the line feed character. Finally, save the file as vpa.supplicant.com. There's also possible to add multiple configurations here, so you can add one for your home network as well. Save the file in a safe place and we will use it later.
Now install Raspberry Pi Imager. You can download it from the Raspberry Pi website. And the installation should be pretty quick. Plug in your SD card in your SD card reader or directly into the computer. Inside Raspberry Pi Imager, select the Raspberry Pi OS as the operating system and select your SD card. Make sure to select the correct one. Then open the settings and enable SSH and also set a password that you want to use. We use the default username Pi. We will not configure the Eduron network here, but if you want, you can provide the password for your home Wi Fi. Then press Write. The installation should be finished in about 5 to 10 minutes. When finished, you can press Continue and close the window. Then unplug your SD card and plug it back in. You should now see it appearing in your computer as the boot device. As you see, the installer has created a lot of files and we can now copy this uh, file with the Wi-Fi details and paste it into the root folder as you see here. If you're not using the Raspberry Pi installer, you can also enable SSH in a different way. The way you do it is that you create a file and name it SSH without any extension and you paste it into the root folder as we did with the vpisapplicant.conf. It's also possible to set username and password for the Raspberry Pi with this method. Then you have to paste a file called userconf.txt and it should contain the username and the encrypted password. You can now right click on your SD card and press eject. We are now ready to assemble our Raspberry Pi. We start by putting it into its case and snapping the lid in place. We can then insert our network cable, which is already connected in the other end. We can also insert the SD card in the slot at the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. And finally power it up with a USB cable. You should see the two LEDs on the Raspberry Pi power up when you attach the power. This indicates that the Raspberry Pi is booting up and starting the operating system. So while we wait for the Raspberry Pi to boot up, we can configure our network card. I go into the adapter options and find the Ethernet card that you have connected the cable to. It's likely that it will have a text with an identified network. Then right click and click properties. Then select the IPv4 version and click properties. Use a static IP address of 169.254.11 and the default uh, subnet mask. Then close all the windows and you can open the command prompt in Windows. Here you type in the ping command and instead of an IP address you write raspberry pi dot local. When you press enter you should see responses like this. This means that we have a connection over the network cable and we are ready to log in through SSH. Write this command, pi means that you log in with the username pi and uh, raspberry pi dot local is the address of the computer. I got a warning here because uh, the computer don't trust the server but this only happens if you have logged in with the SSH before. So to fix this we can just delete the known hosts file in the SSH folder on the computer. And now we can try again and we should be able to log in. Press yes to confirm that you trust the computer. Write in the password. This is the password you entered in Raspberry Pi Imager. And then you should uh, be able to log in. When you see this green and blue line, you are inside. This means that we are logged in with the Pi user and connected to the Raspberry Pi device. The blue text indicates that we are inside the home folder of the Pi user.
just for fun, we can use the ls command to see what this folder contains. As you see, the folder contains a new folder called bookshelf. So, the next step is to get the Wi-Fi working. You might have noticed that we have a message here saying that Wi-Fi is blocked by rfkill. That's a function that uh, prevents us to use Wi-Fi until we have set our own country. That's because there are different uh, Wi-Fi rules in different countries. So to change this, we need to go into the Raspi config uh, configuration menu. And we also need to open it using the sudo keyword to get administrator privileges. When you are inside the menu, you first open localization and then VLAN country. Scroll down till you find your own country. RFKill should now be disabled and we can reboot our Raspberry Pi and then test our network connection. Now type in Ting and then google.com to test our connection. You should get a response from Google immediately, but as you see here, it takes some time, and we then get an error. This is because uh, there is an error in our configuration. We will now fix this problem. If the pinging already works for you, you don't have to follow this uh, next part. To fix this error, we now need to edit the vpasupplicant.conf file that we earlier made in Notepad++ and copied over to the SD card. It will be available inside the Raspberry Pi. To open it, we first use the command sudo. That is to get administrator privileges. And then we can use nano, and that is the text editor. Then we need to supply the path to our file. I will first write etc. And we can also press tab to get it automatically filled in. And then we can find the VPA and press tab to fill it in vpasupplicant.conf We press enter and when we are inside this file I've already seen that uh, the type of quotes here are wrong so I will correct them like this and then we can press ctrl x and we need to write y to confirm that we want to save it and we press enter to confirm this file name now we have uh, fixed the error and we can reboot the device and try again. Let's try to ping Google one more time. Luckily, this time we get a response. And uh, that means that we have uh, a connection to the internet. To stop pinging, Control press Ctrl C. From the internet, we can now download the newest software packages. Use the command sudo apt-get update to make the Raspberry Pi update the package repositories that exist. This makes the Raspberry Pi know what exists and we can then uh, later use the command sudo apt-get upgrade to actually renew the software that is outdated on the Pi. So that's what we're doing now. And, uh, press Y here to confirm that you want to install everything. This takes quite a long time, and I guess it's around uh, 10 minutes. This was the last uh, mandatory step, so next we will look at some optional things you can do. In this part we will use VNC Viewer to see the screen of the Raspberry Pi. This will uh, allow us to use the graphical user interface without having a screen connected to the Raspberry Pi. So uh, to make this work, we first need to enable VNC on the Raspberry Pi. So we will do that in the Raspi config menu. Go into interface options. And when you are here, we can go into the VNC app option. Here we can press yes to enable VNC. And here we get a confirmation. Press OK. So that's it. Now we can press finish 
and reboot Raspberry Pi. While we wait for the Raspberry Pi to boot up, we can install a VNC viewer. VNC is a protocol similar to remote desktop used in Windows, and VNC stands for Virtual Network Computing. So with this program we will be able to see the Raspberry Pi screen over the network. The Raspberry Pi is now running again, and we can try to connect. Write in the hostname of the Raspberry Pi, and press enter. Now it will ask us if we are sure we want to connect, and we then need to supply the username and the password. Now we are inside the Raspberry Pi and we can see the normal desktop. We can for example open the file manager and look at the files. And now we are inside the home folder on the Raspberry Pi and we see here the same bookshelf folder that we saw earlier when we were using SSH. We can also take a look in the start menu. Here we see programming environments, web browsers and different uh, other programs. And we also have the Raspberry Pi imager here, so we can write to new SD cards to install the Raspberry Pi OS. So we have a lot of different tools that we can use. <coughs> Using VNC Viewer, we can also transfer files from our own PC to the Raspberry Pi. Browse for the files that you want to transfer and click open. The file will immediately be sent to the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. This is a very quick and simple way to transfer files, but if you are going to transfer a lot of files, I would recommend the WinSCP program instead. Finally, to close the VNC connection, you press the X in the top of the VNC viewer window. That's it for this tutorial. I hope this will help you getting started with your projects. Thank you.